All right, uh, last two problems here in the chapter 9, 10 test review. Uh, two brands of cat food flips a coin to decide which of the two foods to feed uh, Fern, the cat. There we go. Uh, and we've got N, X bar, and S uh, for each of the uh, two types there. Uh, so... Let's see, we're going to, one, let mu, uh, what should we call it, t, equal uh, the mean amount of tab eaten by fern, sure. And mu c equals uh, the mean amount of chow eaten by fern. And hopefully it was clear that we were defining mu there because we had x bar for each group. We have s. This is not a proportions problem. Uh, this is... Um, a random assignment of two uh, different uh, brands of cat food. Um, and we're looking at the mean difference. So uh, it wasn't paired in any way. It was randomly assigned um, on which day. So no pairing here. These are two distinct groups. Um, so we've defined our uh, means uh, for each, uh, no null hypothesis because we're going to construct a 99% confidence interval. So once we define those, uh, we have to just check our conditions and then we'll carry it out. That should be good. Uh, we'll decide which way we want to subtract at some point. Um, but given uh, that the T is higher, we'll probably go uh, tab minus chow. Uh, so, we're going to go with the two sample T interval at 99%, uh, which is, oh gosh, X bar uh, T minus X bar C plus or minus uh, the T for, uh, we'll say, uh, this more conservative uh, 29 degrees of freedom uh, at 99% confidence. And then, uh, this is again where mistakes get made. 3.45 squared over 31 plus 4.62 squared over 30. Because the S is underneath the radical, uh, well, we want S over the square root of N, but because it's all underneath the radical, it's S squared. And that again is because we combined random variables. Uh, so that would be our equation, but we're not even at, to the, at the work yet. So you're either going to write the name of the test or the formula. So I'll go back and write the formula. Um, so s uh, t squared over n t and s squared c uh, over n c. There we go. There's the, stand, that's the formula we're going to use. We'll fill in the values later in the problem. Uh, let's see, we've got to check RAND, independent, and normal. Um, let's see, we have the central limit theorem, ends greater than or equal to 30. So we're good there. Uh, let's see, flip of a coin uh, for the random assignment satisfies uh, the randomness. Uh, and then the independent, because uh, one, you know, we could attribute the random assignment to, to the independent. Um, so random assignment, I'll throw that in there. Um, and that therefore, how much, how much was eaten day to day? independent.
right? Because it could have been back to back tab days or tab chow tab, you know, all those kinds of things. Uh, all those are satisfied, so now we can get into the calculation. Uh, we'll try and keep everything on the page here. 85.2 minus 82.1 plus or minus uh, the T, um, 3.1, whoops, 2.1. Two point eight, but two point seven five six. So we'll go with the table value uh, for the conservative uh, degrees of freedom, and I'll give you the answer for the calculator one as well. But now's the time for three point five four squared over thirty plus four point six two squared over thirty one, uh, and this is going to result in an interval. If you do all the math. Uh, to point two two and five point nine eight uh, from the calculator. We'll just sneak that in here. Uh, is a little bit more narrow of an interval. This point three to five point nine. That's from the calculator because it uses that. Um, what it, well for this particular problem, what ended up being. Uh, 53.64 degrees of freedom. Um, that weird calculation that you don't need to know, but in any case, is there um, a slightly smaller T value with all of those? Uh, but in either case, uh, we're ready for uh, the phrase that pays. Right? We are 99% confident the true. Uh, mean or difference in means in mean amount uh, of uh, food eaten, and again it was uh, T minus C, uh, is between. 0.22 and 5.98, uh, and this was measured in what was this measured in grams? There we go, and we're done. Right? Calculate and interpret. There was no follow up about is it truly that they eat more of one? As it turns out, it is because zero is not in the interval, uh, but that wasn't asked for in this particular problem. Uh, looks like we've got one left. Here we've got uh, an election coming up. Uh, so we're looking at, uh, in this case, o Obama in 2008. And uh, 120 out of 250, 132 out of 240. Um, and we're looking at men and women uh, voting for President Obama. Uh, is this convincing evidence that gender, that there's a gender difference in uh, Obama's support? Uh, so we'll significance test at alpha equals 0 0.05. Okay, um, so hypothesis test, right? It's answering a yes or no question. Is there a difference? Therefore, it's a test, not an interval. Um, what we'll call P, uh, let's see, who had the Higher proportion, uh, the let's see, the women had the higher proportion. So we'll go PW uh, minus uh, P uh, M uh, equals zero. That there's no difference versus PW minus P M uh, not equal to zero. Just was gender a factor? Not you know were the women higher or lower, but just was there a difference? Uh, where PW is the true proportion of women who vote for Obama uh, in 
2008 election um, in this city. That's where they came from, right? A local newspaper. So we'll say in this city. Uh, just to be clear that it's not a national uh, poll. Oh, there we go. Medium-sized city. Uh, and PM is the true proportion of men who vote for Obama in 2008 election in this city. All right. Uh, and alpha has been defined as 0.05 for us, so we're good to go. Uh, two prop Z test, uh, which would be, uh, whoops, Z equals P hat W minus P hat M minus the null P W minus the null P M over, now this is the two prop Z test, so this is our time to uh, combine, to pool our, uh, our sample. So p hat c, q hat c over n1 and 2. And p hat c is x1 plus x2, or I guess this is uh, w and m over n w plus n m. Awesome. Uh, so either by name or by formula, there that is. And our conditions, rand, normal, and independent. Uh, let's see, random, uh, two SRSs uh, stated. Uh, and then for our normal, the number of successes and failures. So you can use either the pooled p hat times n, uh, or you can use the successes and failures. Um, because there is no null p to you. We're not saying p is something. So the only p's we have at our disposal uh, is going to be the p hat sub c value, uh, which is 0.514. Uh, or we could use each individual's. Um, and since we already have those, I might as well just use the successes and failures, uh, which are 120, 130. 132 and 108, all of which greater than or equal uh, to 10. So that's one way of doing it. Um, again, the alternative would be to use um, the p hat sub c with both ends. Um, you'll get effectively the average of these numbers, um, all of which are going to be greater than 10. Anyway, as far as the independence goes, um, we're going to assume that there's at least 2,500 men uh, and uh, let's see how many, 2,400 women uh, in the city. So that's the independence within each group uh, and um, uh, independent between men and women also uh, so that you know one individual's response from one group doesn't affect the other they were sampled separately all right running out of room all right, we're going to do our work for three here and we have the difference uh, let's see p hat uh, for the women, 55 minus 0.48 minus 0, which is the null P there. Uh, and then 0 0.514, 0 0.486 over uh, N1. Well, I guess that was the, the women. So we'll do that. Women, men, 240. Because we're pooling, the order doesn't matter, but... 
0.6 over 250. All of that put together uh, gives us 1.55 as our z value. Um, so it was two tails. So when we go look this up, we want two times uh, the probability that z is greater than 1.55. And so we look it up in the table, we get 0 0.0606, so 2 times that is 0 0.1212. And there's 3 there, and 4, uh, this is our p-value. So based on that p-value, which is greater than alpha, uh, we fail to reject. The p-value is greater than alpha. Uh, not sufficient evidence to conclude the alternative, which was uh, that there was a difference in proportions. And to support uh, that uh, men, women supported Obama differently. That's as much as we can say about that. Uh, part B of this question asks you to construct a confidence interval for this uh, same uh, situation. And we've taken care of defining parameters, checking conditions. Uh, so the confidence interval, um, let's see, the difference it's going to be. It's going to look a lot like our equation from up there. Uh, 0.55 minus 0.48 plus or minus. Now the z we're going to use for 95% confidence uh, is 1.96. Don't use the z you calculated in the previous part. That was the test statistic. This is the critical value at 95%. Those are two different z's. Now we're going to multiply that to. Uh, the unpooled standard deviation of the statistic. So, uh, well, let's keep it in order here. We'll go with 0 0.55, 0 0.45 over 240 plus 0 0.48, 0.52 over 250. Uh, and so we work all that out and we get negative uh, Zero point. Well, let's see. Now I subtracted this. I did the larger minus the smaller. Uh, so I'm going to get negative point zero one eight uh, to zero point one five eight. It looks like that. I think I got that right. All right. Um, we are. 95% confident that the true difference in proportion uh, who support Obama is uh, between negative 0 0.018 and 0 0.158 uh, percent in this city. The point of this problem, really the spirit of it being, did you use the right standard deviation uh, or standard error in the test statistic? Did you unpool it uh, for that guy? That's why that question exists, um, is making sure that these two things are disjoint. Uh, so hopefully you've taken a look at these and you'll uh, meet us up on Zoom with any questions you have about the review.